Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about a subject that people usually try to avoid. I'm referring to the subject of death and dying. According to one study, only one out of every 100 people have a plan about what to do when they die. And only one out of every 500 have a plan about what to do if they become seriously ill. Very few families have ever had a conversation with their elderly members about their medical preferences if the day should come when they cannot speak for themselves. Death is definitely the elephant in the living room that no one is talking about. I say we usually try to avoid the subject, but on the other hand, there is a part of us that seems to be fascinated with death. We see that in the proliferation of horror flicks and our fascination with ghosts and paranormal activity. There are many strange ideas about death and dying, and this creates a lot of confusion. And that's why, as Christians, we must turn to God's Word, the only source of true information about what happens after we die. Science can tell us a lot about the physical aspects of death, but it can't tell us about the afterlife. For that, we need revelation from God, which we have in His written Word. Why is this topic important? Well, there are several reasons. For one thing, we are often called to minister to those who are suffering the loss of a loved one. At these times, death suddenly lurches into the forefront of people's thinking. So an accurate understanding of what God's Word says about it will help us answer questions with well-grounded biblical insight. Secondly, Christianity is all about life and death. John wrote in his first epistle, this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Third, the Bible's teaching on death is motivation for godly living. The psalmist writes, Teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. That's Psalm 90, verse 12. Death reminds us that life is short, and we need to use our time wisely doing the work of the Lord. St. Jerome was the first biblical scholar to translate the Bible from Greek into the common language. The story is told that he used to keep a human skull on his desk to remind him that life is short, and to motivate himself to finish his translation work. His translation, by the way, came to be known as the Vulgate. Fourth, Christ's victory over death is great news. People need to hear about this. The specter of death has been defeated. The greatest enemy of mankind has been overcome. Can you imagine if tomorrow the news headlines came out saying that a cure for death has been discovered? Well, in a sense, that is exactly what happened when Jesus arose from the grave. He is our cure for death. Fifth, teaching what the scriptures tell us about death can lead others to Christ. Do you remember the old evangelism explosion question? If you died tonight, are you sure you would go to heaven? Although I take issue with the phrase, go to heaven, because people usually understand that to mean to go to a final home which is in heaven, whereas the biblical teaching is that our final home will be on the new earth, not heaven. Nevertheless, it is still a valid question. Finally, a study of what the Bible says about death is important because it is common to all people, regardless of race, ethnicity, social status, economic status, or geographical location. Everyone must face death, the great equalizer. As Benjamin Franklin once said, in this world nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Francis Dugan wrote about death as the great equalizer. Some die of natural causes, some in a tragic way, but for every single one of us a final night and day. Without respect for the power of wealth and without respect for fame, death, the great equalizer, treats everyone the same. Without respect for anyone or creatures, great or small, the billionaires of the world to the reaper's scythe do fall. Not discriminatory in any way, he claims the lives of the young and the old and the gray. He is a true egalitarian, of him one can only say, and for each and every one of us a final night and day. I don't want these videos to become too long, so I'm going to stop here and we'll pick this up in the next video. Hope to see you there.